let's dig into how we can use the Microsoft Authentication Library for .NET to authenticate to one of the endpoints within the Microsoft Identity Platform. So I just have my developer environment here. I'm going to go to portal.azure.com, log in as my user, and then from here, I'm going to go in to the Azure Active Directory and go to my application registration, so app registrations. Here, I have an existing app registration called YouTube, and this app registration, if we go to authentication, supports mobile and desktop applications using localhost as my redirect URI. Now, I'm going to just copy this client ID because I'm going to need it in a second. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to nougat.org. And remember, I'm going to include links within the description box. For nougat.org, I'm going to just jump into Microsoft.identity.client. That's going to be the namespace for the Microsoft Authentication Library for .NET. We see that as of the recording of this video, it has a couple of preview versions. And I can install it using .NET CLI. So let's do that. I'm going to open Windows Terminal. And I'm going to go to my downloads folder and I'm going to create a new directory called msal. And I'm going to open msal within the context of, oh, actually, I'm going to change directory into msal, then open msal within the context of Visual Studio Code using the code dot code opening Visual Studio Code and dot meaning current directory. Now, from here, I can spin up a new application. I'm just going to do a .NET new script. Um, that's just a custom project type I built so that I can build all top level programs pretty easily. So here we have our script.cs file, it's just a really simple script just says, Hey, hello world. If I go .NET run, it'll build it. And then it takes a second to build because I haven't built it before. And once it's built it, it will execute it right after. There you go. Hello world. Going to .NET at package. Microsoft.identity.client. And then I'm going to run .NET build after that. I'm just been doing this for a long time. And for some reason, running .NET build makes me feel better. Now I clear my screen so we have a nice clear screen. So jump back into Visual Studio Code. I can go ahead and add a using for Microsoft.identity.client. Now, Let's talk through how Microsoft Identity Client works. The easiest way to work with this is to create uh, application classes using their static builder classes. There's one for public client applications and one for uh, confidential client applications. The difference is a public client application is an application where the user is going to need to log in. So your application doesn't know anything about the credentials. Think of it essentially as a pass through that's blind to the credentials. A confidential client may be something that's unattended or automated where you need to store some type of credential on a machine and use that credential to authenticate. So think of like a service or a, a, um, a device. So we're going to use the public client application builder class and it has a create method. And this create method needs a client ID. So I'm going to string client ID equals and paste in the client ID that we've been using. Paste that right there. And then I can configure it fluently. So, for example, if I want to set up a tenant, I can do with authority. So, this we're going to allow anybody for any tenant. We don't need to do that. But we will add a redirect URI, HTTP, localhost. And then there's other items we could configure. But for today, I'm done. So, I'm going to call build. And that will give me my public client application. If I just hover that, so you can see our public client application type. And I'm going to store it in a variable called app. The next thing I need is a um, list of scopes. That's going to be a string array. I'm going to call it scopes. That's just a little bit easier. And just do a new string array. And then from here, I can put in the scopes I need. Uh, we're going to just keep it simple. We're going to read profile information. So graph.microsoft.com, user.read will be a good enough scope for today. Now, let's start playing around with this. We're going to take our app. And we want to implement authentication flow. And we see there's a device code, interactive, username, password, integrated Windows off, and then silent in case you need to acquire your token after the user's already um, quite, um, re interacted. We're going to just do interactive, keep things simple. So we're going to open it up. 
need to pass in my scopes and then call execute async. Since this is a synchronous method, I want to await it and I'm going to store the result in a variable called result. Keep things simple. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and just add a using static system dot console so I can write line result dot access token. Save that. Going to go to Windows Terminal. Going to run dot net run. It's going to open the last browser I touched, which should be Edge right here. Going to log as my user. I've already given this application permission, so it didn't ask for permission. Go back here. There's my access token. Now I want to use this access token to access the graph. Um, how do I do this? Well, I need to pull in another library. So .NET add package, which library I'm going to use today? Well, I'm going to go to NuGet.org, and the library I want to use is called Flurl. Now they have the Flurl main package or Flurl.http. This is a client library that just makes it really easy for you to issue HTTP requests. So I'm going to add flurl.http as long as I spell it correctly. And then like I always like to do .NET build. Clear my screen just to make it a little bit easier to read. I'm going to go in here, comment out this code, and I'm going to add a using block to using flurl.http. Probably didn't need so many. Now, this is how easy it is to use Flurl. I know for the graph, I need to go to graph.microsoft.com and go to the beta endpoint and go to me. And that's the endpoint I want to issue a request to. Now, I need to issue a request with an OAuth bearer token. So with OAuth bearer token, we already have one, result.access token. Going to issue a git string async. So that's going to return a string asynchronously. So I need to await it and put in a variable called JSON. Right line, JSON. So simple. I go on to graphmicrosoft.com. I'm going to take the token we grabbed and I'm going to get the result back as a string and print it out. So if we go to .NET run, it's going to open that browser window again for us to authenticate. I've already given it permission. So there we go. There's my much more complex spelled out profile. And just for fun, uh, this is the beta profiles, which are much more complex. If I just wanted to do the V1.0 profile, I'll just show you this, aka.ms slash GE, which is the Graph Explorer. There's the graphmicrosoft.com version 1.0 me, and then there's the one we tried, beta me. You can see that beta endpoint gives you a lot of information. But if we go to 1.0 endpoint, and run it, it doesn't give you nearly as much information. Let's try that one. Go back to Visual Studio Code, paste that in, save it. Let's run that again. .NET run. It's gonna pop my browser window, gonna give her permission, and there's our much, much smaller JSON object. So the msi.net library is just a really easy way for us to use the tokens and get the tokens using the endpoints that are part of the Microsoft Identity Platform without having to go through all the manual steps we'd have to do if we were to implement this ourselves.